Airports and airport emergencies require concise communication procedures. There are two types of airports, controlled and uncontrolled. A controlled airport has a staffed and operating air traffic control tower. An uncontrolled airport is one without an operating control tower. Some airports staff and operate their control towers only during specified times, such as daylight hours, and are uncontrolled at other times. When operational, the control tower is in charge of airport movement and communications for both aircraft and ground vehicles. In addition, aircraft approaching and leaving the airport will contact the control tower for guidance and clearance. The primary means of communication on an airport is aircraft or aeronautical radio. ARF vehicles should have appropriate radios on board. They should be capable of transmitting five miles on any 25 kilohertz channel between 118.0 and 136.975 megahertz. An air traffic control and air carrier aircraft typically use the VHF band. Aircraft approaching, landing, or taking off will use the runway or tower frequencies. Air traffic control may also assign a discrete emergency frequency to allow the ARF incident commander to speak directly with an aircraft's flight crew. Uncontrolled airports use a Unicom frequency, or Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, also known as a CTAF. At some airports, these two frequencies are the same. There is also an internationally recognized civil emergency frequency, 121.5 MHz, which is constantly monitored by pilots and air traffic control facilities. ARF vehicles should have radio equipment that allows the monitoring of various frequencies, at a minimum, the ground control and tower frequencies, ARF personnel may also need to monitor multiple fire department, police, and airport operations frequencies. Listening to multiple frequencies can be confusing. The vehicle's driver is responsible for safe movement and should focus on the ground control frequency. ARF personnel must have all required communications equipment to safely and efficiently satisfy their mission. Some airports have dead spots where radio transmissions cannot be received. Cell phones may be used in areas where communications are limited or when radio traffic is heavy. Air traffic control can also use light guns to signal aircraft or ground vehicles with radio problems. In cases of radio failure, signal the control tower by pointing your vehicle toward the tower, turning on all emergency lights and flashing the headlights. The air traffic control tower will often have a direct phone line to the airport fire department. ARF personnel may also receive emergency notifications from flight service stations, air carriers, 911 calls, or airport staff. Klaxon horns, rotating beacons, and other alarm devices may activate automatically when triggered by emergency alerts. Alarm systems should be tested daily and should have a backup power source. The Automated Terminal Information Systems, known as ATIS, is a continuously repeating broadcast of airport weather conditions, notices to airmen, and other information. Airport personnel should provide the fire department with important airport information. The FAA may review your awareness of this information during inspections. Airport communications must be clear and concise. Standard protocols help minimize the risk of confusion or misdirection. The most important guideline is to listen. Listen to the ground and tower frequencies when moving around the airport. Listen before speaking to make sure no one else is transmitting at the same time. Overlapping transmissions are useless. If you don't understand a transmission, ask the sender to repeat it. Misinterpretations and mistakes can and will occur. When you do speak, be clear and concise. Know what you're going to say before you say it. Speak distinctly and calmly at moderate speed. Hold the microphone close to your mouth at a 45 degree angle. Use standard aviation terms and phrases and avoid jargon and codes. Because many numbers and letters sound alike, airports use the International Phonetic Alphabet to communicate letter designations over the radio. For numbers, speak one digit at a time and pronounce the number nine as niner. For example, to refer to runway 29, say runway 29er. 
All vehicles and aircraft need clearance from air traffic control to drive on taxiways and runways or enter the movement areas. Entering a movement area without clearance can lead to collisions, injuries and deaths, legal liability, property damage and investigation by the FAA. Firefighters are cautioned that entering a movement area without permission is considered an incursion by the FAA and must be reported to the appropriate officials. You do not need clearance to enter non-movement areas. When requesting clearance or stating your intentions, always provide the following information in the following format. The name of the facility you're calling, such as Washington Ground. Your call sign or vehicle identification, such as ARF-2. Your position, such as on taxiway Charlie, holding short of runway 31. And your request, such as request permission to cross runway 31. You may also specify your route, if appropriate. Washington Ground, this is ARF-2 on taxiway Charlie, holding short of runway 31. Request permission to cross 31 and proceed inbound on Charlie to the south ramp. If air traffic control approves your request and route, they will reply with proceed as requested. The controller may also provide specific instructions to change the requested route. ARF-2, proceed as requested. Cross runway 31 on Charlie inbound. Report clear. Air traffic control may issue a hold short command to ARF vehicles moving in airport areas. ARF vehicles may also receive instructions permitting them to move only after allowing an aircraft to move in front of them. Acknowledge clearance by repeating the instructions and your call sign. Crossing runway 31, ARF 2 over. If the frequency is busy during peak traffic periods, you may not be able to repeat the entire message. Read back enough to convey that you understood the message. Regardless of radio traffic, never hesitate to ask for clarification if you need it. Always hold your position until you have clearly understood the instructions issued. ARF personnel should be familiar with standard emergency hand signals for evacuation recommended, recommended stop, and emergency contained. Give signals from the aircraft's left front side as seen by the flight crew and use wands at night. In an emergency, air traffic control will often restrict ground movement and radio traffic on the ground frequency. Air traffic control personnel can often inform ARF personnel of the type of aircraft, the type of alert or emergency situation, the number of people, and amount of fuel on board and other useful information. Based on this information, ARF personnel should have the discretion to upgrade or downgrade the alert level. If necessary, repeat the information over fire frequencies and the PA system to alert other ARF personnel. In some cases, ARF personnel may need to speak to the pilot in flight to discuss the emergency, observe the aircraft's condition during a flyby, or develop an emergency action plan. Use the discrete emergency frequency in this situation. ARF personnel may also speak to pilots after landing to ask about the situation of the aircraft and its occupants, provide information on exterior conditions, request engine shutdown, or recommend an evacuation decision. The final decision to evacuate or not rests with the pilots. Always keep cockpit crews informed regarding what is going on, what you intend to do, and what you recommend they do. If an emergency is too large or complex for the airport fire department to handle, request mutual aid fire resources. Mutual aid procedures are listed in the AEP. Don't wait until you need them to call mutual aid resources. Anticipate and request adequate resources for the worst case scenario. This is especially true with significant problems on large frame commercial passenger aircraft, such as smoke odor or visible smoke inside the aircraft confirmed fire, blown tires, and other flight or control problems that could affect the aircraft's ability to land or slow down after landing. ARF personnel may also need to notify other resources identified in the AEP, SOPs, and checklists, including airport management, medical services, security, and air carrier representatives.